time. That time never let go of a grievance. That's your lapse today. What do you say? Well done. No. That's a shame. Because you're dancing with me. Now then, so today's impression tutorial is Luca Changretta from season four of Peaky Blinders. If you haven't seen the first two videos of this series, go and check them out because they will be referenced here. In this video, I'm going to give you some hints and tips as to how to start and improve a Luca Changretta impression. And then at the end, I'm going to do a case study on differentiating two impressions that are very similar to make them distinct. Please drop a like on the video and suggest a next impressions tutorial in the comments section. But let's get into it. So the resources you want to use is Netflix, Peaky Blinders season four, there's lots of good monologues. But the one that I would probably start with is the scene where Tommy meets Luca for the first time. I'm not sure if it's on YouTube. So the accent is Italian American, essentially Marlon Brando in The Godfather, but without the upturned mouth. The voice comes from down the throat, it's very deep and croaky. And you want to use phrases like, hey, I'm walking there. Because that's all Italian-Americans say, don't they? If you manage to produce the noise from further down your throat and also constrict the airflow a little bit, you'll find that you'll get that natural croak a little bit easier. Just to add a bit of nasal, restrict the airflow a little bit through your nose. Uh, on a scale of one to sever a snape, you want to be at about a hands gruber. And it's quiet. It's almost a whisper. He draws people in. In terms of speech pan, it's very slow and measured. Sometimes he doesn't even say the full word, just the shadow of the word. You get the feel of it, but you're not saying the full thing. The body language of Luca Changretta is very exact, there's minimal movement, everything's very efficient. Very little mouth movement, and he speaks out the side of his mouth. Hello, that sounds right. Came from Paris. He talks with his head tilted back a little bit. I saw the mobster come away. And this is my trigger to get myself into a Luca Changretta impression. I pretend that I'm holding that toothpick that he is. Okay, you take it to the side of your mouth, and all of a sudden, the sound is already coming out of the side of your mouth. Okay, it makes you tilt your head back a little bit. Hello, okay. Try and mirror this kind of body language. Uh, every so often going a little bit deeper. Uh. So this is a case study on if you have two very similar impressions, how can you make little subtle differences in the body language and delivery to make them distinct? So someone goes, that's Luca Changretta, that's Marlon Brando. Alternatively, if you have a good impression like Marlon Brando and you want to shift over, think of the little changes that you can make to that impression in order to make it a new impression. Jump ship like a burning rat, if you will. So what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to study both characters and come up with a list of any differences that you can make. For example, Marlon Brando. His mouth shape is more like an upturned U sort of frowny shape. Oh, when was the last time I went for a cup of coffee? Huh? The sound is coming a bit more from the top of the mouth as well. You wanna, you wanna do that? I would not do that. I would not do that to you. And his hands gestures are a bit more gesticulative. When was the last time we went for a cup of coffee? I don't know the Godfather quotes that well, but he does. He talks more like this. Whereas Luca, as mentioned before, the sound is more out of the side of the mouth. He's got the imaginary toothpick for a bit of extra body language. His head's a bit more tilted back. And his voice comes from deeper down. I came from Paris. Does not mean I'm French. He took your gun and he loaded it. Then when you have the two impressions, think of one little trigger that will get you into that character as opposed to the other one. So I use the toothpick, okay? If I'm going to do Marlon Brando, I'll use my hands like this. And that helps the muscle memory start to get into that particular character and not merge them. Uh, 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 uh. 
Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Another example where this is useful, if one actor plays two quite similar characters, but you just want to make the tiniest tweak so that those characters aren't identical. For example, Aidan Gillen playing Littlefinger and also playing Aberama Gold. Those tiny differences in the face and the body language will help make that subtle little difference, which I think is quite satisfying. And who should the North rally behind? The last true-born daughter of Ned and Catelyn Stark, born right here at Winterfell. I like this place. How much? You tell Mr. Strong I'm going to buy his yard. I decided to make it part of our deal. The accent is very similar, but if you make the little changes to the body language, it can make a big difference. So finally, I'm going to give you a caricature learning frame to start learning your Luca Cengretta impression. I heard you had trouble. It's good of you to see me. You know, Paris. No. I came here from Paris. That does not mean I'm French. I snuck an accomplice into your office. He found your gun. And unloaded it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to drop a like and also subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, make sure you leave a comment in the comment section voting for the next impressions tutorial you would like. I'll see you next time.